What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Show. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? We are back once more with the weekly show. Sorry, this wasn't up at noon like I've been trying to do for the last few weeks, but I uh, had to go into work this morning and had to stay a lot longer than I thought, so I came home, grabbed a bite to eat, and now I'm sitting here doing this. Um, little update on what's going on on the channel. Obviously, if you can see, I'm using OBS and not my usual Elgato. Um, I'm still having problems with it. I'm trying to figure... I, it, at one point, I thought it was maybe my computer got damaged. Um, I said this in one of my... Uh, Travis Strikes Again videos that when I was watching the Super Bowl, I ended up uh, ripping out the headphone jack and, you know, I was thinking, oh, did I mess up my computer more than I thought? But everything is running fine. Um, other than, you know, that piece that I broke <laughs> uh, during the uh, during the bowl game. Um, so, you know, I, it's not my computer that's the issue. It's, it's something to do with the Elgato. It's either the Elgato software, which I'm thinking it might... It's I, I can't tell if it's the audio software, the recording software. I don't know. I'm still troubleshooting that. I'm going to try and reinstall it again today. Um, or I'm, it might even be my capture card. I don't know if that got damaged by my cat maybe knocking it off my desk or playing with it or something. Um, so it, it, there's a few things that it could be. Um, and I will be trying to fix that in uh, the next day or so. So hopefully... Um, I won't be out of recording for a while, especially because next week, I think we have three games coming out on Friday. I'm trying to think what they are. They are Far Cry New Dawn, uh, this is all on the 15th, Far Cry New Dawn, Crackdown 3, and Metro Exodus, I believe, are the titles. Um, and we will be playing all three of those, uh, you know, provided that my software is all up and running. I think that's about all the announcements. If you're new to this program, basically what I do, I sit here, I read, um, you know, video game news. Sometimes we watch videos, but I really didn't have any videos this week. Um, I, I probably could have looked into that, um, oh, it was the, the, the Titanfall thing. Um, I can't, I can't remember the name off the top of my head for some reason. Multiplayer Battle Royale game. It didn't totally interest me. I know a lot of people are liking it, and I'm glad. It's just not for me. Um, but either way, so we're going to sit here and read some articles. Down in the description below, there are links to all the articles along with timestamps of where they're covered in the video. Uh, if you're interested in that, I think that's about it. So let's just hop right into the news. And starting off, we have the new 2K studio helmed by Dead Space creator is making a mysterious game. Article Jordan Remy, Remy? I, don't, I don't know, of GameSpot. And Take Two Interactive Software has announced uh, that game industry veteran Michael Condry has joined 2K Games as the head of a new Silicon Valley based studio. Currently unnamed, the studio will be working on a new unannounced project. And I quote At 2K, we offer our collective audience a variety of engaging and uh, competitive captivating, what is wrong with me, captivating entertainment experiences, and quote 2K President David uh, Ismaili, Ismail, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, said, and I quote, we continually seek opportunities to empower and invest in the right people and ideas. Michael's unparalleled creative production and leadership accolades are well documented and deserved. We are greatly inspired not only by his passion, but the potential for his new studio to complete our existing profile and development expertise. Today's announcement represents a rare and special opportunity for developers to help build and shape a new Silicon Valley studio from the ground up. Condry added, uh, and I quote, I couldn't be more excited or thankful to embark on this next step in my career. End quote. Condry's new studio joins the 2K umbrella alongside Firaxis, Hangar 13, Visual Concepts, and Cat Daddy. Don't know much about Cat Daddy, in all honesty. I know Visual Concepts, aren't they the ones who do the story modes for the NBA 2K games? Hangar 13 was behind... Oh my god, who the hell was Hangar 13 behind? Uh, what game was that? They were behind, um, game wasn't that good. I actually kind of like Mafia 3. There we go. I don't know why that was so hard for me to come up with. Yeah, Hangar 13 was behind that game. Um, still really disappointed in that. And Firaxis, if I remember correctly, they are Civilization and XCOM, I believe, are who they, they work with. So yeah, I mean, that, that I, I really I always forget how much... 2K has under its umbrella. Um, I, I mean, it, it's one. It's one of those that I'm not going to say it rivals EA, but you know, when when I think of like the massive publishers in the video game industry, I think EA. 
But uh, 2K has a, has a lot of studios underneath its its banner. Hmm. Uh, previously, Conjury co-founded Sledgehammer Games, which is responsible for several well-received Call of Duty games, specifically 2011's Modern Warfare 3. I didn't care about it. 2014's Advanced Warfare. Actually, I did like that one. And 2017's WW2. Loved that one. Uh, prior to that, Conjury led the Visceral team on a very, uh, very different type of game, 2008's Dead Space. More than 10 years later, the influence of Dead Space is still felt today, specifically when it comes to more action-focused survival horror games like the Resident Evil franchise. I, I take issue with calling the Resident Evil franchise action-focused survival horror, mostly because Resident Evil 4 was really kind of the start of that, and even then I'd still say Resident Evil 4 was more of a survival horror game than it was an action game. It was 5 that really became an action game. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, given the recent uh, critical acclaim of Resident Evil 2, which we gave a 9 uh, out of 10 in our review, I gotta agree with that. It would be awesome to see Condry leading a horror game again. EA's decision uh, to close down Visceral shut down one of the game industry's leaders in the survival horror game genre, created a void that no other studio has managed to truly fill yet. No, I, I, I think that's spot on right there at the end. I, I think um, with this guy's experience in working on, um, working on games like this, I, I think it could be interesting watching him uh, take over and really move on to doing some more uh, survival horror stuff. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be... How to put this? I think it's going to be hard to recreate the success that you could have with a Dead Space because, let's let's be honest, Dead Space was phenomenal. And I'm talking the first one. The second one was also really good. We can ignore the third one. I, I honestly don't even remember the third one. I, I know I played it. I just can't remember a thing about it. Dead Spaces 1 and 2, though, were great. Oh, my God. Be it the the like the pseudo-Lovecraftian space horror, the, uh, the selective dismemberment. It, it just everything about Dead Space was great. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... He has a chance to really do something, and, and again, he's making a mysterious game or what, you know, some game that we don't know, and again, this is entirely speculation, and like like the guy said at the end, I mean, it could, it could also just be he's working on a new, um, like like he also headed, uh, what they said he headed Sledgehammer, I think, I think yeah, yeah, co-founded Sledgehammer, so I mean, who knows, he also has experience with uh, shooters and everything. I mean, this guy's got, from the looks of it, has experience with a lot of different titles uh, spanning a few different genres. So, I mean, this could be anything, but I am really hoping, especially now with what we've seen out of the survival horror genre with games like Resident Evil 7, the Resident Evil 2 remake, with... Uh, I can't actually think of anything else right now off the top of my head with survival horror. I mean, well, I guess we have the upcoming... Uh, the upcoming Days Gone, but I wouldn't necessarily call that a horror game. I'd call that more of a survival-ish open world game. I, I don't know. I don't really a action adventure survival game. There we go. I think that fits Days Gone. Uh, just because it's zombies, I don't think it's you know necess necessarily a horror game. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting distracted here. No, I I like I said, I I would love to see this creator come in and do another survival horror game but like i said i think expecting him to do dead space again i i think that's like asking him to capture lightning in a bottle twice i mean dead space was great but at the same time we have to remember they all can that i think dead space is i i don't want to say it re reinvigorated a genre it it's just, when you think of survival horror games, I would put Dead Space up there in one of the ones that I will sit here and name to you. It, that's that's what I'm getting at. And expecting him to create the same thing, I think, is maybe going a little... is a little much, but I have no doubt that whatever they're going to make is going to be an interesting project. So, I, I, I keep an eye out on that. Alright, moving on. We got an article on PC Gamer. This is a report. Apparently, Activision is going to be hit with some substantial layoffs next week. Article by Andy Chalk. Bloomberg is reporting that Activision Blizzard will announce job cuts on February 12th. That could number in the hundreds. The report says that the cuts come as part of a uh, restructuring, and I quote, aimed at centralizing functions and boosting profit, end quote. Basically, they're uh, afraid. <laughs> They've lost money, and we'll get into that in the next paragraph. Uh, the cuts will follow a tumultuous, tumultu I love this word, and I can't speak it right now, tumultuous? 
Tumultuous. I thought that word had an R in it. Sorry, you don't not here to hear me debate spelling. Tumultuous uh, stretch for Activision, which reported stable Overwatch monthly active users in its Q3 2018's earning, but a decline in Hearthstone, and also expressed disappointment in the performance of Destiny 2 Forsaken. Bungie subsequently split from Activision Blizzard last month, ending the company's partnership earlier than expected. Um, I was reading on that. I believe Bungie had a 10-year contract with Activision Blizzard, but yeah, they left early. But again, Destiny 2... I, I, I've heard from people that Forsaken almost completely changed up the game, that it's almost a completely new game if you come in playing Forsaken and not just the base game. But even then, the base game I, was a step back from where the original Destiny ended. Um, and that's not just me saying it. That's I've heard friends say it. I've heard commentators say it. I've heard, I've heard tons of people talk about that stuff when it comes to Destiny. That's, uh, that's nothing new. But, I mean, again, when... <sighs> Hearthstone, I'm not saying it's not still big. Same with Overwatch, because I mean, what both of those have an e-league, but even or, or ha, you know have a have an esports league. But I don't know. I I mean, when it I, I when it comes to Overwatch, I, when I when I look at um, Overwatch as an esport, honestly, it, when it comes to esports, for me, it's StarCraft or um, Counter Strike. That's about, those are the two big ones to me. Which, I mean, you know, maybe we can throw in League and Dota. But, yeah, I, I don't think Hearthstone. I don't think Overwatch. Maybe because they're both kind of relatively new. But I don't think that they have the... What's the what's the word? I mean, it, right there is stable monthly active users. I, I don't think that they're pulling in as much money off those two projects like they were thinking. Or maybe some of the hype is tied down on them. I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't really play either of those games. Hell, I really stopped playing Destiny 2 a while ago. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think Activision right now is in a good way. I mean, I think about the only, the only really, and again, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way when I'm talking about stuff like Overwatch and Hearthstone and whatnot, or even Destiny 2, but I think the only truly successful title EA or that Activision has right now is, is, uh, Call of Duty. I think that's about it. Um, let's see here. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Activision Blizzard has also recently lost several high-profile executives. Longtime Activision publisher or publishing CEO Eric Hishberg, um, Blizzard co-founder and president Mike uh, Morhaim, Activision Blizzard CFO Spencer Newman, and Blizzard CFO Emirta. Uh, Auja? I, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that one. And also, before anybody tells me that you know Activision Blizzard doesn't have um, doesn't have the Call of Duty series. I, I'm talking Activision, oh, the company Activision, not Activision Blizzard. You know what? You know what I'm getting at. It's uh, Activision is, I believe Activision is still the publisher for Call of Duty. Hmm. Now, as soon as I make a make a hard statement on that, now I'm, I feel like I'm I'm making myself dumb. I'm going to check that later. Uh, despite the apparent belt-tightening Activision Blizzard saw fit to award its new chief financial officer, Dennis Durkin, Durkin a bonus worth $15 million for accepting the job on top of his uh, $900,000 salary and $1.35 million target bonus, uh, analysts expect Activision's sale to slide about 2% for the year to $7.28 billion. Among the traditional giant publishers, Activision Blizzard is not alone in its woes. Bloomberg reports uh, note that Electronic Arts' share price fell 13% earlier this week following the report of disappointing sales, and Take-Two Interactive also tumbled after forecasting sales for the quarter uh, that were below analyst forecasts. Yeah, I can, t I can tell you that, uh, at least on the EA front, it was, uh, it was because Battlefield Five didn't. Yeah, Battlefield Five did not sell like they wanted, like they thought they did, and that's not necessarily all the game's fault. I actually, Apex Legends, that was the game that we were ta that I was talking about earlier. I can't believe I couldn't come up with that. Um, no, when it, when it comes to when it, when it comes to EA's issues, I don't even think Battlefield 5's issues was Battlefield Five itself. I thought Battlefield Five was a good game. All in all, I enjoyed it. I thought the the war stories could have been a little better, but. Oh no! I enjoyed the game as a whole. I think the big I think the big issue with that was um, uh, it was the controversy surrounding the game. It was what Patrick Soderlund, <laughs> how he kept putting his foot in his mouth and all that stuff. So yeah, that's eh, that, that's a that's a totally different issue. When if you want to get into it, I don't know why my mouse is 
lagging this weird. I gotta check the check the connection here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Moving on, we got an article by Game Informer. CD Projekt Red offers more compensation to Witcher creator Andre Sapkowski. Article by Imran Khan. Um, this is kind of continuation on what we talked about. I can't remember when we talked about this. It was a couple, probably a couple months ago. But it was when um, Sapkowski went to CD Projekt and basically wanted royalty money for you know the use of the Witcher series. Um, as far as I was able to read it and far as I was able to understand it, CD Projekt Red made a clean deal. They well, they didn't buy the IP, but they bought the rights to use the IP to make the video games. And then Sapkowski saw how, you know, <laughs> how much of a cultural phenomenon The Witcher became after the video games that he then wanted more. That's that's how it looked to me, personally. Um, I thought they were going to settle out of court, and that's kind of what it looks like uh, they're going to do. God damn it, this stupid thing. So yeah, I mean, if they're they're offering more compensation, I have no doubt. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be settled, and this isn't even going to actually go to court. Um... Although, I mean, I guess this would be a uh, Polish court, not, and uh, the Polish laws on this might be a little different than, or, you know, might be different in American. So, again, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, last year, Andrew Sapkowski, and, God damn it, last year, Andrzej Sapkowski was pretty upset about The Witcher video games. As the writer of The Witcher book series, Sapkowski ended up signing away a lot of his rights to CDPR for a flat fee after turning down a profit percent... Uh, was it? Yeah, turning down a profit percentage deal, assuming that the game wouldn't actually make any profit. Yep. <laughs> Several Witcher games and millions of dollars later, Sapkowski regrets this decision and made the... Uh, and made that clear when he demanded uh, $16.1 million in royalties, which CDPR rejected. Now it's CDPR changing their mind and offering Sapkowski uh, compensation. Again, I, I think 16.1 is a little ridiculous. I, I think that's... Uh, I think asking for $16.1 million in royalties is ridiculous. Now, don't get, don't get me wrong. If they if it was unpaid royalties and he asked for you know asked for all this stuff and this was in the deal up front, sure he's due what is in the contract. But the deal was he turned down that stuff. He wanted a flat fee for the rights to make the games. Again, if this this is how I've read it, every article I've ever read, that's how it is. That's how I've read the situation. That they came to him wanting to make the games. He said flat fee and you can make the games. You know, didn't want the as as it said profit percentage deal. He turned that down. It's his fault for not having faith in the IP. I I, I what what else can I say? I think CD Projekt Red's being nice, offering him money. Although I think they're just avoiding going to court because it probably would have caught. I'm not going to say it's going to cost them more to go to court than they have to pay out, but you know, it's it's one of those that it's probably just a pain in the ass and it's easier to pay. Again. Uh, that's that's my take on the situation. Uh, according to Polish news outlet Pulse Business, uh, oh, God damn it, Poland. Uh, CDPR has agreed to pay out some money to Sapkowski in recognition for his role in creating the Witcher series. Uh, the number, which was not disclosed, is quite a bit less than the 16 million he demanded earlier. But CDPR uh, argues it is quite a bit more than they are obligated to give. In a statement given to uh, by the developer, they explained that they are mainly trying to maintain good relations with Sepkowski through this payment. Yep, that's pretty much, like I said, that's exactly how I'm seeing this. Uh, both parties have agreed to the settlement and have, uh, was have both parties have agreed to the settlement and have, according to their lawyers, resolved the uh, situation amicably. While the next Witcher game is likely quite a ways off, presumably, uh, presumably CDPR does not want this hanging around their neck while the game is one day in development. A small payment is not a big price to pay to keep Sapkowski from dragging the game or trying to uh, delineate between the games and the books uh, or the what is it. Sapkowski from dragging the game or trying to delineate between the games and the books or the upcoming Netflix show aggressively. I have no idea what the hell that last sentence is about. Maybe maybe I'm not reading it right, but it doesn't fully make sense to me. No, I again, I, I exactly what happened is what I thought was going to happen. They're settling out of court to save themselves legal fees, keep them in Sapkowski's good graces so they can hold on to the game rights for the IP. That's... I mean, that's that's how I thought this was going to go down from the very start. But at the same time, I don't think Sepkowski... In all honesty, I don't think Sepkowski was owed anything here. 
Um, now, I mean, you can you. I mean, that's not me saying he didn't create a phenomenal. Uh, maybe I'm using that word phenomenal a little too much, but he he made a great series, a great lore with all these books and everything with The Witcher. I'm not saying he didn't. I love The Witcher. I love the books too. Um, now the Netflix show, I don't know. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to watch it, but yeah. um, but no, Sapkowski made a great book series with The Witcher. But again, when it went to the when you read the original deal, he turned that stuff down. I and then regretted his decision later. I, that's where my problem lies. It's not the fact that he doesn't deserve. Well, saying he even deserves something, I don't think is technically right. And again, you you want to tell me that I'm misunderstanding Polish law or I need to look into Polish law? Fine. But from the way it reads to me. And what, what I think is, again, this is my personal opinion on what I think is fair. A deal was struck, the deal, and, and then somebody regretted the deal way after the fact and now wants more money. I don't think that's right, personally. So that's, that's my stance. God. All right, next article we have is uh, by IGN, article by uh, Brian Barnett. EA working on new Need for Speed, uh, Plants vs. Zombies game. I, for some reason... That comma makes me think it's a Need for Speed, Plants vs. Zombies, like, crossover. I don't know how that would work, but I would love to see it. <laughs> uh, EA has announced plans to deliver new entries in both the Need for Speed and Plants vs. Zombie franchises. In a recent press release, EA, the EA COO and CFO Blake Jorgensen, that's a really fun name to say, said the publisher will, and I quote, deliver new Plants vs. Zombies and Need for Speed titles. And quote, although details on upcoming entries have not yet been revealed. Jorgensen also said EA will, um, and I quote, grow Apex Legends and related Titanfall experiences, end quote, and uh, quote, add Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order to our sports titles in the fall, end quote. Um, see, Jedi Fallen Order, I'm, I'm interested in, but again, it, when it comes to Star Wars games, I want another, I want another Knights of the Old Republic. And for the love of God, I wanted to see what Amy Hennig was working on. I believe what she was working with Visceral before Visceral got shut down. I wanted to see what her project was, and I I don't know. There's something about what EA has done with all this with all the Star Wars games. I'm I'm kind of worried about what they're going to do with Fallen Order. That's just me, but but from what I've heard, people are really liking Apex Legends. I I, I didn't like the Titanfall franchise that much. That's why when I heard Apex heard of Apex Legends or the Titanfall announce whatever announcement i i was just kind of like eh, i really i really don't care but um i don't know I, I might give apex legends a shot you know i i might uh, but no i uh, overall sorry I got, I got distracted <laughs> um just with what this is saying it looks like ea is really doing a good job trying to uh expand what they're doing beyond just the sports games i mean i'm interested to see what they're going to do with the new need for speed game i mean i'm really interested i'm kind of hoping that we get to see them, um, that they're going to continue off of Payback, because Payback ended on a cliffhanger. I hope they continue that, because I like the characters, I thought the gameplay itself left uh, a lot to be desired, but all in all, it was a Need for Speed game, it was enjoyable, again, um, it reminded me, it kind of reminded me of Need for Speed Most Wanted, that was one of my favorites, um, or personally my favorite. Um, and I'm and again, I always have to say this because there were two Need for Speed Most Wanted. I'm talking about the original one on the PS2. God, that game was good. What was I talking about? <laughs> Sorry, uh, let's keep going. Jorgensen went on to note that FIFA as a standout title and the highest selling console game in Europe during the 2018 calendar. Yeah, no shit. He also said that the company is, quote, making adjustments to improve execution and is refocusing R&D, end quote. Last year, EA hinted Respawn could release new titles before the end of 2019, possibly including Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And earlier today, Respawn CEO uh, Vince Zampella uh, confirmed the developer has plans for, quote, more Titanfall, end quote. Later this year, Apex Legends experienced a strong start. Uh, experience a strong start after its surprise launch drew over 1 million players in the first eight hours. Yeah, um, I don't know. I wish good luck to EA. I mean, I, I know people bash on EA. I have my own issues with EA, but I, but I wish them the best. I, I don't want to see publishers and developers go out of business. I really don't like to see it um, just because I think everything that they do can be turned around. 
Um, with EA, I think it's a it's a big thing of stop being a faceless corporation and make video games again. Stop. <laughs> that's that's my statement. I, I think I was, I was talking. I think it was Brian Gade. I was talking with him in the comments, um, and he said that uh, I think he said he was saying something about Pro Evolution being a better, uh, probably being a better soccer game than FIFA is, or how the the FIFA or how the the um uh, what what was it that he said? How EA. He doesn't like how they have, like, exclusivity deals with, like, the NFL, so no other company can make an NFL game. So no other company can, like, have the, uh, can have certain league, like, with uh, Pro Evolution Soccer, from what I believe, it's, they don't have stuff like Champions League, there are certain markets that they don't have teams for that FIFA does, because FIFA has a, um, uh, what's, what's the term, exclusivity deal. Um, I think that was in the last video, you can probably go find the... Uh, the comment chain that me and me and Brian were talking about, but no, I, I I think he's right. I think EA does have some it does have some some issues that I think make good business decisions. But I think as what they are with games and what it does for the audience isn't in the how to put this. It's probably in the company's best interest, but maybe not in the fans and the audience's best interest. If that makes sense. Um, and yes, I think sometimes business moves. He, they know people are going to buy games. They, you know, they're a massive publisher. People are going to buy games. EA might have suffered a stock loss, but I still don't think EA is in trouble. Like people have, you know, I've seen people celebrating the stock loss, and I'm looking at them going, "This isn't crippling for EA." Yeah, it probably sucks, and they're probably thinking, "Ooh," but it's not going to kill the company. That's what. <clears throat> excuse me. That, that, that's that's basically what I'm getting at. I, I think companies like EA, I think. They need to think more of the gamers than they do um, flat out the company. I think they'll be just fine. And I also wish them the best of luck with all these upcoming titles. Uh, next article, Game Informer. We've got a short uh, short thing here by Imran Khan. Let's see here. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a huge, expansive adventure, and you spend a lot of uh, time making Alexis... Alex, I cannot pronounce his name for some reason. Alexios or Cassandra as strong as possible. After spending dozens of hours doing that, you might want to head back in time and replay the game, but not any weaker than you were before. Finally, Ubisoft has heard these pleas and is bringing New Game Plus this month. Maybe if we have that, they can get rid of the stupid chicken. Sorry, I hate the chickens. And we find this out through an adult, an age-old art of ASCII. That's cute. Um, not worth a, not a whole lot of details, but considering that Ubisoft tends to give very little notice when updates for Assassin's Creed are on the way, they might just drop it uh, one day when it's ready. A tweet later down the line does confirm. More details will come next week, so hopefully we'll also get a release date then, too. With no Assassin's Creed game in 2019, maybe replaying Assassin's Creed Odyssey as a strong warrior god might be a good way to get your thrills. Um, didn't... Aren't they aren't they doing the re-release of AC3, or did that already happen? I can't remember. Hmm. I have to check into that, because I, I know I got that. I just can't remember if I... No, I think that already released. God, I should know that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I've been keeping up with everything that's coming out. Hell, this month alone, because I mean, what? I, I already, at the beginning of the show, I said what we're playing uh, on the fifteenth. Then on the twenty second, we got Anthem. We got four games this month alone. Hell, we had three last month. Um, so again, I just keeping everything straight this year in what's already come out and not come out. It's just, it's, it's been a, it's been a chore for me. <laughs> um, but no, as far as new game plus, I'm not surprised to see this come. Um, like I said, I just wouldn't do mostly include this for those. Cause I know a lot of people really loved AC Odyssey. Um, and just kind of give them the, the heads up. Hey, this is on the way. All right, coming up, if this page will load, there we go. Article, uh, The Walking Dead, the final season, episode four. We have the release date and it's apparently soon. Article by Austin Wood of Games Radar. Uh, work on The Walking Dead, the final season, properly resumed in November 2018 after Skybound Games stepped into... There we go. Uh, uh, Skybound Games stepped in to resurrect the series following Telltale Games' abrupt closure, and it seems its development is nearly finished. As Skybound announced today, Episode 4, Take Us Back, is scheduled to release next month on March 26th, just over two months after the Episode 3. And I quote, It's hard to believe Clem's journey is coming to an end, Skybound said, just like you guys were struggling to grasp uh, the fact that the journey is almost over, but we're so ready and thankful to have all of you alongside 
guide us as the story comes to a dramatic close, end quote. There was a time not too long ago when it was unclear if Clementine's story would be finished at all, so it feels a little surreal to have the final release date. What's more, the entire final season will see a boxed release alongside episode 4, given the series' development troubles, which saw latter episode, or later episodes pushed to the Epic Games Store on PC. A complete physical edition seemed unlikely, so it's nice to see all four episodes in one place. The boxed edition will be available on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, also on March 26th. A price point has not been announced, but you can bet it'll be close to the price of the full season pass. Speaking of which, as always, players who previously purchased the final season pass will automatically receive episode 4 from their usual storefront. I mean, what, the season pass is $35, $40? Bucks? Maybe $30? I can't actually remember how much the entire Walking Dead season was. Um, no, I, I, I've i been enjoying this season. I think it's kind of a letdown from last year, or from... The, from um, Last Frontier? Was that what that one was called? The the last season that we played. I thought the last season was amazing. I mean, this one's pretty good, but I I thought the I thought the Last Frontier was just it was so freaking good. It was I, I loved it. I loved the characters. Um how Clem wasn't it was kind of back to being not not a s I don't want to say a side character. She was still a main character, but uh just how we see her it, it kind of grown up from being a kid. I I, I thought season no season three, yeah, was was great. Uh, but the final season, I've been enjoying, um, but I, I feel it's a little bit of a letdown. I still have a feeling, though, that the very end of the se- uh, the very end of this season is going it's going to end the same way that uh, that the first season ended, which is going to be Clementine. You know, she's bit. You know, and she's kind of sitting there, and uh, you you know, looking at looking at AJ, and then we're going to take his perspective and choose to shoot her or not shoot her. I think that I think it's going to you know kind of do that whole everything comes full circle thing i feel like they teased it a little bit there in uh in episode three but i'm i don't know i'm i'm curious to see how this ends i think skybound did a great job um picking this up and everything with them so all right moving on to our final article death stranding is a miracle movie director says article by eddie makuch of gamespot makuch makuch i i can never pronounce his name either i i'm terrible with names if this video has not proved that to you yet uh, let's see here. Death Stranding is the next game from Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima is available, was, is already playable. There we go. And developer Kojima Productions is allowing outside people to play it. Uh, Jordan Vogt Roberts, uh, who is directing the upcoming Metal Gear Solid movie, recently tweeted that he's had a chance to play Death Stranding. In short, he was blown away describing the game as a miracle. You are not ready, Vogt Roberts said on his of his impression uh, of his impressions of Death of Death Stranding so far. God, I cannot speak. There's a look at the quote. Uh, was it? It's like freebasing pure Kojima and Shinkawa. <laughs> Remember when Fury Road blew you away, but also made you, in the best, most thankful way, ask, "What the fuck? How does this miracle exist? You are not ready." By saying you're not ready, I mean, come on. I, I think what uh, it was, Samori Road, and he sent me that he, you know, sent either this tweet or an article talking about this tweet. It, yeah, I think my response to him was, "It's Kojima. No one's ever ready for whatever this guy is gonna do." Um, and, and I say this in the best possible way. Kojima is absolutely insane. And again, I say that with all the love in the world. <laughs> I mean, that dude has created such works of art, but also so, uh, some stuff that just uh, that I think if you try and follow the full lore of Metal Gear Solid, your head might explode. Uh, and I, I mean, hell, and this is coming from somebody who's now just starting to get a handle on the Kingdom Hearts uh, lore. I mean, my only issue with Kingdom Hearts is how they played with the timeline. It's how everything kind of jumped around a little bit. And they also mixed between like eight or nine different consoles, you know, with multiple consoles. I guess you could say Metal Gear Solid did the same thing. Although, I mean, it was still pretty linear. Because, I mean, it, you know, there was the Metal Gear games. They kind of went to uh, up to, um, well... Never mind, because, what, 3 went back in time, then 4 with Guns of the Patriots was the very end. Never mind, it's just like Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I started that point, and then I'm like, no, nope, it's crazy. Let's, let's just admit it, it's crazy. <laughs> um, 
I'm sorry. Uh, Roberts isn't the only celebrity to speak highly of Death Stranding. Speaking to Metro, uh, the Walking Dead actor Norman Reedus, who plays a character in Death Stranding, said he's never seen anything like what Kojima is doing with the game. And I quote, the concept is so far out in the future, instead of eliminating everyone around you, it's bringing everyone together. He explained it's a very positive video game, but scary and depressing at the same time. It could uh, was It's kind of a new movie. It, I've never seen anything like what we're doing, end quote. Overall, Rita said Death Stranding is a crazy, complicated game, end quote. It's Kojima. I'm, I'm not surprised. <laughs> the trailers and information about the title released thus far do not fully encapsulate what Death Stranding is. It seems, I again, I'm not surprised. <laughs> The trailers show you an aspect of it, but not a whole picture of what the game will be. He said, uh, Death Stranding is Kojima's first uh, new game since his split with Konami. Very little is known about the game, and that appears to be in, uh, intentional, with Kojima weaving secrets into the, its trailers. In addition to Redis, the game features other celebrities as Mads Mikkelsen, uh, Lea Sedo, um, Lindsay Wagner, Guillermo del Toro, and Troy Baker. No release date has been set as of yet. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited. I I have no idea what this ba crazy bastard is gonna be make. And again, I say that with all the love in the world. Sometimes people people hear me say that about Kojima and think I hate him. I could not be farther from the truth. I love him. I follow him on Twitter. I think he's he's hilarious, but he's so freaking right. Like the uh, was it was it E3 or games? I can't remember which trade show it was when he was getting ready for Gears or for not Gears Five for Metal Gear Solid Five when he came out with his head and those bandages. I mean, he it's just he's always doing something weird or something. I I love Kojima, um, and I have no doubt this game's gonna be a work of art. But I I just I'm I have to prepare myself for it. <laughs> um, all right, well that's all the news we got for you guys this week. As I said at the beginning of the show, I'm I will try and have all my recording my recording situation figured out in the next day or so. I am so sorry for this, guys. I I really hate not doing work, and it's really starting to frustrate me. Really kind of. Uh, kind of messing with my head, but uh, I am I am working on it, so uh, that's about it. Thank you for watching, guys. Facebook, Twitter, the website, Minds.com. Links, all that stuff is down in the description below, along with links to all these articles. Please remember to like, comment. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more next time. But until then, my name's AJ Gels, and this is the Umthar Gaming Channel. I'm out. My mouse will start working. <laughs>